you don't need to do things that you don't enjoy. People who just aren't designers, they are usually the ones who have the most to say. And it's always the if we have time or if we have enough budget. Getting paid less than men. This is catching up to me. My job is catching up to me. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. For those who are new, my name is Cinda and I'm a product designer from Toronto. So today's video is a juicy one and I'm gonna be spilling all the tea and my unwanted opinions around the things I hate about being a UX product designer. Just a disclaimer before I get started, in no way am I saying that I hate my job because that's the opposite. I do very much enjoy my job, but I think it's safe to say that all of us have things that we dislike or don't like, you know, hate about our job, and these are mine. And with everything on my channel, I like to be very transparent and honest, so here it is, unfiltered. Number one is unnecessary culture activities. Let me explain what I mean by this. It's not like the fun things that we all wanna do. It's more of those activities that we have to participate in. That They say that's not mandatory, but it almost comes off as mandatory and it's not really like that fun to do, it feels like work, those are the culture activities I'm talking about. Especially the ones that happen after work hours and like we have no say that we wanted to do, it was just organized by leadership. Those are the worst ones I would say because we are giving up precious time out of our personal lives to attend to this and we don't need to or are we even getting paid for. Number two is the exhortation to be good at all things even though they say you don't need to. Even before you get the job, I think a lot of employers will let you know that like we'll play to your strengths and you'll never have to or you know you don't need to do things that you don't enjoy. But I feel as though once you work there for a while or you know like you're trying to like progress in your career at the job at the company those conversations come up again like they kind of ask you to do things that you didn't want to do or signed up for for example for me i really don't care for graphic design like illustrations all of that just because i don't like it and i don't enjoy doing it maybe it kind of plays into the fact that i suck at doing them but i generally don't really care to get good at it i don't know if that's something that like people can relate to but i think it's totally okay if you don't want to excel in things that you don't care about especially if you tried to get good at it and it just wasn't in your interest then that's fine as long as you tried it i think that's fair and you can move on number three is having to talk to many people many people and many different people so as a designer we are constantly talking to different teams different people stakeholders of like different ages uh, different skill levels and so on and that's part of our jobs like we have to communicate and like do all these presentations to different people and i think it gets really tiring especially for someone like me i would say i'm like an ambivert which means you're half extrovert and half introvert that's kind of who i am i can be an extrovert when i need to be but deep down i am an introvert and i like to be by myself and i don't like to like socialize too much so as a designer we are kind of the opposite of that we kind of have to always talk to people communicate with people uh, meet new people like network and stuff like that and i think after a while it does get very tiring but it's something that i've naturally kind of accepted and i'm okay with as long as it's not like too much and i can kind of get the break when i need to so for some reason i forgot to mention number four so I'm gonna do that right now, and that is that business needs will trump user needs, usually all the time or most of the time. And it's just kind of the hard truth, sad reality of being a product designer. It's something I experienced working at startup, agency, and now at a bigger company as well. Number five, and that is meetings where everyone thinks they're a designer. This is a fun one, and I think a lot of designers can relate and resonate with me. And that's because during these presentations or like these design reviews where there's a lot of stakeholders involved or like leaderships or people who just aren't designers, they are usually the ones who have the most to say and the most things that they want out of the design without knowing anything about design. It's inevitable. There's always gonna be people who are critiquing your work or telling you to do things in a way that, you know, that don't make sense as a designer. Number six, too many opinions from many different people. Once you work for a bigger company and there's a lot more stakeholders involved, a lot more business people involved, there's a lot more on the line. And sometimes you can't really ignore it, 
it's kind of like forced on you because money is on the line at the end of the day these are businesses who are trying to grow and make the money and you know sometimes design is like not the top priority and they just want you to push out things for business needs so i think that's been hard and very difficult as a designer especially for me i'm not really like a senior or lead designer i'm more of like an intermediate designer and having those conversations with like top like c-suite level people it's really hard to convince that design is a priority especially when they have other things in mind so number seven designing shit that you know won't work just to prove a point to owners product managers and you know anyone else involved i don't know if any other designer has felt this before but i'm sure you guys have and it's when you know exactly that what they're asking for is not the right solution but you have to do it anyways to make a point point. and i think that in itself is very exhausting and tiring because doing that like the work is not easy even to prove a point like it's still a lot of work and then you have to go back and start from the beginning but it's almost like why do we always need to do that why can't there be like a compromise and obviously you can make these compromises and it takes practice to be able to have those conversations but i've had or i've been in situations where i had to do that i had to show things that i knew that wouldn't work just for them to be like ah uh, okay you're right let's go with your solution now and i think sometimes that's okay that's how it is sometimes but i'm definitely trying to find a way to not have to go through that route every single time number eight still having to fight for user research or seen as the least priority so i think this is a pretty common dislike of all designers user research is still not like something that everyone needs or wants in a company especially for smaller startups they definitely do not prioritize this. Even at my company, we do have like a separate user research team, but depending on the project you're working on and like timeframes, we don't have enough time to include user research. And it's always seen as like the last priority or the thing that we'll squeeze in if we have time. And it's always the if we have time or if we have enough budget. It's never, we will make the budget or we will make the time and i really don't like that because as a product designer ux doesn't exist with the ui and so on and ux is a part of user research as well and i think with anything in the design process you need to be able to validate your designs and if you don't have their research you're not validating for the user you're not helping for the user it's more around like the business so that's something that really frustrates me where we just always have to fight for it we always have to explain why we need it it's never like a part of the process or a part of the requirements number nine no clear framework on different level of designers this just always depends on the company there's no step-by-step rule or framework around how you get from junior to intermediate to senior to lead etc these roles really depend on the company and you just never know where you're at until you get into a new company or they do evaluation for you during like performance reviews and i think that's really hard as someone who wants to grow as a designer you know what you're working towards but sometimes you don't know how to work towards it the hard part is that if you don't have a good manager, it's really hard to grow within a company. And maybe like, you know, if you're good at taking the initiative and like putting yourself first and making that framework for yourself, then I think that's great. But I know a lot of younger designers don't know how to do that. And it's because there's no framework or there's no program or course that teaches us those things. It's kind of, we're just thrown into the dark and we kind of figure it out. So I really wish there was a better way to understand like, where we are at as designers and you know this also just plays with like imposter syndrome number 10 no clear resource of how much we should be getting paid i think this is you know a common thing around being a designer like especially a ux ui designer because it's still pretty new and i think the hard part is like again you don't really know where you stand so when you do apply for new jobs or like trying to get a promotion or a raise or whatever that is you don't really know where to stand and like you may do your research online but that range can like vary depending on where you are where you live your skill set your experience and like all these different things and i've noticed like as a designer the word depends comes up a lot it's always it depends on this it depends on that there's just so many factors involved 
and I wish there was just a better way to know how much we get paid. Number 11, getting paid less than men. All right, let's talk about this. It's a fact, statistic that women usually get paid less than men. I wish we were valued more. I think it's gone better in the last couple of years, but I just wish that we didn't always have to explain ourselves or we feel scared to ask for what we think we're worth. And I just think us as a generation, like just society needs to do a better job at helping women UX designers, you know, get paid the same as men. Just don't know why that's such a problem or just too much to ask for. Number 12, having to sit at a computer 90% of the day. So this is actually a big one. As a designer, you guys know we are designing in front of our computers most of our day. During our nine to five, it's literally 90% of the day where you're sitting, whether it's like meetings or you're like wireframing or whatever that is, that is literally our job. And I think it's really hard on our bodies. For me especially, I actually recently got some like back issues that I go see my physio and Cairo for and I'm just noticing that this is catching up to me my job is catching up to me and I've only been doing it for like three years so yeah I've invested in like a standing desk where I'm trying to stand more while like during meetings and stuff like that a better chair so that's something I very much dislike about being a designer and just like working a desk job number 13 not being able to design what you actually want to design so sad reality guys you may never design what you actually want to design you may never get the chance to especially if you're always going to be working for someone else some people may not care about this like they might enjoy designing for other people but i almost feel like a lot of designers they come into ux design loving the problem solving loving designing what they think looks good and so on and like pleasing themselves but the reality is once you get a job you're doing everything to please someone else essentially sometimes you work on things or products in general that you don't care about or you don't enjoy you're just doing it to grow your experience like your skill set or even maybe make more money and i think that's something that's not talked about a lot which is like a reality for a lot of designers i know some people are very good at just doing it as like a job but there's some part of me where i do want to still enjoy what i'm designing and what i'm creating that's definitely something else that comes with the job number 14 extensive interview process this one i absolutely Hate. And it's because who likes going through three to five to six interview calls? It's very tiring and mentally exhausting. It's literally another skill set that you have to get good at. It's not just like being a good designer. It's being a good communicator, being a good storyteller. It's just a whole nother thing in itself. I sometimes even wonder why the process is so long. Like I get it because it's so competitive nowadays. There needs to be a better way to like vet people and you need to go through that process in order to find like top talent and the best people for your company. I totally get that, but I just wish there was a better way to go through the process without it taking so much effort and time. Last but not least, number 15, and that is imposter syndrome comes very easily. This one is one of the top ones about being a designer and just being in the creative field in general. I think imposter syndrome comes very, very easily. And I think it's because it's like such a new industry, new field, it's so competitive, it pays well. Like there's just so many different factors within like this job title, you know, not knowing where you are, where you stand as a designer and not having that clear framework. It all plays into the fact that we feel like we're imposters. Literally every day I have like a realization of like, am I really a good designer? Like, do I deserve this job? Do people think I'm good at the job that I'm at now? Like just so many questions where you just put yourself down. And I think that's something that a lot of us go through and still go through. Like I still go through this every single day. These thoughts will never go away, probably never anytime soon since we're always trying to grow and get better. And that naturally also brings in negative thoughts and feelings about ourselves. I just wish there was a better way to combat those feelings so that's probably my top thing about what I hate about being a UX product designer. So I know that was a lot, but trust me when I say the good outweighs the bad or else I would probably have quit my job a long time ago. Um, I would not be here right now making these videos for you. I just wanted to share kind of from my experience and show you guys that 
you know, even though it may seem like being a UX designer seems like one of the best jobs in the world, you get paid so well, there are also a lot of things that are difficult about our jobs that make it really hard for us. And I wanted to just shed some light around the bad things, the things I dislike and hate about my job. Just so you guys know, not everything is perfect and there's pros and cons to every job, to everything out there. I've even had two burnouts in the last year. So if you're interested in learning more about my burnouts, you can actually check out this video up over here and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.